Hello everyone, Bill Constain, Freedom Wealth TV, and we have a special episode and a PowerPoint uh, that is titled Increasing Retirement Income by a $1 million on average. Some more, some less. Uh, my company is Freedom Wealth Services. You can see the information here, and one of the books that we're featuring here is The New Rules of Retirement Savings by Marty Ruby. Uh, we'll be making that available, PDF copies for those that are interested. Just make sure you contact us here. Also, you can contact us at info at freedomwealthservices.com. If you're new to this channel, uh, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell if you like this type of material. And, of course, a thumbs up and a positive comment, always welcome. So without any further ado, let's go on with the presentation. So in order to verify, validate, and answer all of your questions about this program, I'm going to go through this PowerPoint and show you information that you are probably not familiar with. In this slide, Judge Learned Hand said in America that there are two tax systems, one for the informed, and they pay lower taxes, and one for the under-informed, and they pay higher taxes. Qualified plans like 401ks, IRAs, 403bs are for the under-informed. I know that sounds kind of unbelievable, but now it's time to become informed about the 401k alternative. So moving right along, you have two basic choices. You have qualified and you have non-qualified investment accounts. And corporate pension plans, you see the X there because they're not offering them uh, anymore. To save for retirement, you basically have these two choices. Uh, IRA, Roth IRA, or 401k type programs, or you can use a non-qualified plan like a savings account, a CD, a money market account, <clears throat> a life insurance, or some other kind of personal pension plan. It's true some people still do have a corporate pension plan, but corporations are eliminating them as quickly as possible. So, primary risks of a qualified plan. <clears throat> so, after the market crash of 2007, um, let me just get my thing here, in 2008, CBS 60 Minutes and Time Magazine dug deep into the problems and the inherent risks that the qualified plans have. They came up with four primary risks. Market losses, high management fees, future tax rate increases, and the longevity risk outliving your savings. During their investigations, they fortunately discovered that there was an alternative to the 401k that had, that had none of the four primary risks associated with 401ks, which you can see here, market losses, high management fees, future tax rate increases, and longevity risk. There is a better plan that's the good news so how many more market crashes in your lifetime major market loss average from 1900 to present you can see before we get started let me ask you again how many more market crashes will you see in your lifetime as you can see from the early 1900s to today the market consistently goes up and down and has experienced many devastating market crashes. The average loss is over 47%, and those crashes take place about every 11 years. What you may not know is that the 401k only came into being in the mid-1980s, and as you can see from 1984 all the way up to 2000, you didn't have to be a smart investor to win on Wall Street. You simply had to have money in the market. Everybody thought that they were going to retire with plenty of money back then, but then came the devastating crash of 2000, and then again in 2007. So the question is not will the market crash again, but when? So primary risks of qualified plans, high management fees. The second primary, uh, primary risk that they uncovered was high management fees. The sad fact is the majority of people have absolutely no clue to how much money they're paying in fees for their 401k. Do you have any idea how much you pay in fees? 
Well, the 401k average book has come out. So let's talk about 401k fees. Did you know that you are paying two sets of separate fees to own a 401k? That's right. According to the 401k average book, people are paying between 0.87% and 1.88% just to own a 401k. And this does not include mutual fund or management fees. Pretty shocking, I know. So this year's edition of the book includes a new set of benchmarks. So if you're really employed by a really big company, you'll pay less. But if you're like most people, you could easily be paying one to 2% or more, not including the management fees. The report found that the average total plan for a 10 participant plan with $500,000 in assets was a shocking 1.9%. When was the last time you asked your company how much you pay? So what does Forbes magazine have to say about this? The real cost of owning a mutual fund. And the average mutual fund fee can run anywhere from 3 to 5%. Non-taxable account expense ratio, transaction costs, cash drag. Uh, you even have turnover ratios. Um, wow, taxable account 4.17. Again, that's on top of the 401k fees. These fees can eat up 30% or more of your savings. So a look at 401k plan fees, according to the U.S. Department of Labor, the average mutual uh, fund fees can run anywhere from 3% to as high as 5%. So it's very possible to be paying a total of a minimum of 2 to as much as 5%. Fees are associated with my investment choices in a 401k plan, sales charge, management fees, other fees, and so forth. Then you have your mutual funds, the front end loads, the rule, 12B1 fees, target date retirement funds. Just, you know, this video is here to help you do your own homework, check into your own accounts, take responsibility for what's going on. You want to make sure you know what you're paying for. Now, a little unknown fact is if you have a 401k from a previous job that you're no longer working there, the fees can be even higher. So if you have a 401k from a previous job that can be rolled over into an IRA or into a pension plan that could be tax-free, that's an email that you may want to be sending and contacting us with, or you could send a message here as well. All right, fact sheet. Uh, U.S. Department of Labor, and let's just go over to that. Final rule to improve transparency of fees and expenses to 401k type retirement plans. For the past 10 years, the U.S. Congress fought with Wall Street and the mutual fund companies over disclosing how much people truly pay to own a 401k. In the past, they kept the fees and costs hidden. In just two years, just two years, the U.S. Congress finally passed a law that allows you to find out how much you pay for 401k and the cost of investing in the mutual funds in your 401k. And if you don't know how much you're paying, I highly suggest you call up your 401k administrator and ask them how much you pay in total fees. You might be surprised. You might be shocked. You probably know the interest rate that you pay on your house and the interest rate that you pay for your automobile, but most people have no clue how much they're paying in fees for their retirement plan. And those fees can become extremely expensive and cause your 401k to run out of money years sooner than you expected. It's time you found out. Wouldn't you agree? And remember, in retirement, even if you're not there yet, think forward that the number one concern for a retired person is outliving their money, being in their 70s, 80s, 90s, and their money gone. And, and the big reason is because of fees and taxes. All right, primary risk, now future tax rate increase. Now let's take a look at that. <clears throat> All right, so there's a better plan here. So let's see what's going on here. So number of boomers retiring. Americans age 65 and older. You can see the chart here as well. Let's see here. And which way do you think taxes will go? Do you think they're going to be 
staying the same, going lower, going higher. <clears throat> Most people think that they're going higher. Take a look. Historical margin tax rates for the highest and lowest, uh, lowest income earners. A little known fact that this country, the United States of America, our spectacular country, had no income taxes from 1776 to 1913. You can see it starting here in 1912. At the end, we started at 1%. And quickly, you could see as we approached the 1920s, we went to almost 80% on that high bracket. Then you see the Great Depression in the mid 1920s and you could see it's been a roller coaster and the average is right now the high bracket's been almost 60 percent so where do you think we're going to be in the future okay there's our u.s debt clock you can see our national debt here over 19 trillion dollars and then when you factor in medicare and social security we're looking at over 80 trillion dollars in debt for the united states and pretty incredible so did you did you just say taxes would probably go up? Your current rate here, that's how much of a slice of that money in red that could go to your your least favorite uncle and your least favorite aunt, Uncle Sam and Aunt Iris, IRS. That's what's going on here. But in the future, if taxes go up, tax deferral isn't good for you, but it's great for Uncle Sam. It goes back to, would you rather pay the tax? and get it out of the way and allow your harvest to grow and keep all those dollars. Just imagine you were a farmer. Would you rather pay tax on that seed? Let's say the seed was $1,000. Get it out of the way and then the harvest is $100,000 when you go to the market and not pay any taxes when you go to sell your corn or wheat. Well, the same is true here. What are we doing with our 401k? Well, we're getting that tax break on the seed. So on the smaller dollars, the few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars, we're getting a tax break, but on lower tax brackets. In the future, when you have your harvest, 100,000, 200,000, hopefully a half a million dollars and above, a million dollars, that's where Uncle Sam and Aunt Iris are going to be very interested in your account. How will the government make up for the shortage, raise taxes, change tax brackets, or eliminate tax deductions altogether? All those are on the board. Primary risk of qualified plans. The fourth is, will I outlive my money? Primary, uh, now AARP, quote, 61% said they fear depleting their assets more than they fear dying. That's pretty sad. Well, if you have a great plan and you know your money will last well and above 100, 110, 120, you could focus on living a great life, having a wonderful lifestyle. You know, it's an interesting thing. I've been doing this over 25 years, and my clients, when they go away on vacation, they're on a cruise, and if the market's down big time, they're relaxed. And that's the thing. When you're looking at heart attacks and strokes, uh, do you really want to be concerned that all of a sudden we had a market crash and down 20, down 30%, and you're 75 or 80 years old? How would you like it? If you had a, a lock-in provision where it couldn't go below zero as far as a rate of return for the year, and you could travel with your family at ease, focus on living, enjoying the fruits of your labor, and not worry about that risk, but still get the returns. There is a better way. We call it the 401k alternative. And according to the former editor of Time Magazine, the answer is to put your money into an insurance plan that guarantees you a pension only when it's structured properly we'll talk about structure in the future what do advisors to the wealthiest 10 percent know that your cpa doesn't maybe they don't know maybe they do i don't know maybe some do but maybe they're not uh, articulating it to you wall street journal october 2010 according to the federal reserve 22 percent of this investment or savings vehicle is owned by the wealthiest 1% in the United States. 55% of this asset is owned by the wealthiest 10%. Tax-free retirement savings and a tax-free death benefit rolled into one plan, a tax-free income for now or retirement for you to enjoy having a tax-free income as a pension, a supplemental pension, tax-free income for you and your family, or a legacy down the road in the form of a tax-free death benefit to protect your family and give that money 
to your loved ones rather than that least favorite aunt and uncle, which I joke about quite often, which is Uncle Sam and Aunt Iris. Wouldn't you rather give it to your kids and your grandkids? Created by three congressional acts, TEFRA, DEFRA, and TAMRA, tax-free under the Internal Revenue Code 7702. So this is blessed and enacted by the IRS. That's the Internal Revenue Code, so 7702. Superior attributes of a tax-free plan, no market losses, 30 to 50% lower management fees, tax-free income for life, income for life, the safer alternative featured in Money Magazine, retire the way you want. Six, uh, six secrets to securing your dream. And let's move on. No market loss, the cap and floor. You give up some of the gain. So in this case, if you had a 22% and then you land somewhere in 10 to 15%, but if the market is down 5%, 10%, your worst case scenario is a zero. Okay, so let's take a look at that. To guarantee zero, so even, you know, here's a negative 25. You don't get that. You get a zero. That's what we call zero becomes your hero. To your average return, according to Wall Street. Okay, so average versus actual. So when you hear the, the mutual fund managers talk about an average rate of return, let's look at an example. Year one, $100,000. You make a, a splash, 100%. Maybe you're in some crazy technology fund. Now your fund is worth $200,000. Here you are, you feel excited, but the next year it's down 50%. So you're back to $100,000. So the average on this would be what? It's a it's 100%, right? Well, 100 minus 50, right? Plus, so it looks like a 50% average divided by two years equals average gain would give you a total average of 25% when you average the positive 100 and a negative 50. So you should have received a 25% gain on this account. Well, the actual rate of return, which we're calling the CAGR, the compound annual growth rate, is actually zero. Because when you look at the math here, this is a, an important thing to understand, a concept average versus actual. So you have $100,000, 100 after up 100, down 50, but then we're not even counting the fees. So when you factor in the fees, this account is at a loss. So, you know, at this point, I appreciate a comment. If you're learning something, if you're appreciating this material, thumbs up, positive, you know, comment. Like to hear if you heard this for the first time or if you heard this before, average versus actual. Really important because they don't factor in those down years and they compound when you're taking money out of the market and you're creating an income in retirement. You don't have the time or the patience or even the risk tolerance to be able to wait, you need the money to pay for your bills. So here you are, $100,000 initial balance, S&P return, account value, then you have the tax-free with a cap, and you can see, starting from 2000 to 2018, you could see the average, okay, S&P return, 4.37 is what's being posted here, and then you have 170,000, when the math is done here, 170,594, the actual is 2.85. Interesting. Then the tax-free, remember you have no negative years, zero is your hero. In this case, you have a cap of 13% with the S&P. And you can see these three years, instead of going down 59,000, a lot of you, uh, this account goes under 60 from 100. I mean, you're out. You know, they say buy low, sell high, but the average investor doesn't buy low and sell high. They usually buy high and sell low because they get nervous. So let's say in this case, you were able to stay patient, okay, which is good. So here you can see 6.7% because zero is a hero, 13% of the cap, 333,000 tax free. And then the the actual average and the actual is the same, 6.7. So where would you rather be, on the left side or the right side? Okay, the S&P versus the tax-free. And which ride was smoother, right? You have the red, the no dividends, and then you have the blue, okay, with the dividends, 245, and then you have an, an actual 4.83 with dividends, or you have the IUL, which is tax-free at 6.54333. You want the red, the blue, or the green? 
comment below. Okay, 30 to 50% lower management fees, far less fees. Starting balance, you could see annual contribution. This is a 401k. We started at 17,500. In the IUL, we're actually uh, contributing less because we're factoring in this tax break, paying the taxes up front. So we paid that 3,500. So 14,000 in a Roth like vehicle. Now that money is going to grow tax deferred and tax free. You can see the gross retirement income, the net retirement income, and then the cumulative taxes paid, 146 versus 70 on the taxes. And then on the fees, we factored in 181, 893, just using below average fees, 96. And then the cumulative net, net income and the cumulative account balance, zero at 85 and $2.1 million. So when I say we have helped people on average save a million dollars in this case, which is not even a lot here, um, that's over $2 million plus a death benefit. The income runs out on this side of the ledger for those that are uninformed on the 401k IRA. Age, you run out of money, 76. Here we put 110, but there's still money in the account. This money doesn't run out. Okay, love to hear what you have to say about that, far less fees. Okay, moving right along, tax-free income. Okay, so you could see that net retirement income, you have to gross it up because now, and that being generous, 20% tax. How many of you are paying 20% tax? Many of you outside of the seven states that have no state income tax are paying state income tax on top of that. So again, where will taxes be again when it's time for retirement? Many of you have tax breaks. Maybe you have kids in the house. You might have a mortgage. You have mortgage deductions. Of course, you're getting a tax break because of the 401k. You'll stop that. Uh, many of you have businesses. You won't have the business expenses. So many people that think they'll have less taxes or be a less bracket in retirement are in for a rude awakening. They'll actually have far less tax deductions and be in a higher bracket than what they thought they would be, unless you plan ahead, right? So here you go, and there are your numbers. Lifetime income, there's your lifetime income, right? Where would you rather be? Having your money run out at 76 or 110, that money continues to flow, and flexible contributions, okay? Tax-free savings and a tax-free debt benefit. This portion, when you look at this portion here, it's paying for your legacy, right? Your insurance. In the working years, that is a great income replacement or mortgage protection for your family if something unforeseen happens. I know everyone who's listening plans to live forever, but the reality is sometimes people die sooner than expected. It happens a lot. Or they get hurt, disabled while they're working. Or they get hurt uh, while they are in retirement. And then they need long-term care. They need a plan. Okay, and if you live a long time, that's great. You want to be in a plan which continues to give you something that you can rely on that's secure, tax free, and without all the risk. This portion goes towards your tax free retirement income, and this portion goes towards the death benefit slash legacy. And you have to have a minimum amount of death benefit for it to qualify under Section 7702 IRS. Uh, otherwise, this will be considered an investment and, be, and treated as such, like a 401k and an IRA. I'm not saying those things are bad. I'm just saying you're going to get taxed like a 401k or an IRA. Now, given a choice, would you rather pay taxes or not pay taxes if you're doing things legally and ethically and within the code? Put in a little less, make it up later, flexible contributions or not, you're in absolute control. And again, you can reach out to us and we can put together a plan for you <clears throat> that works within your budget. Cash value savings continues to grow even as you take home retirement. You can borrow the dollars and that is the way you do it in a tax-free pension plan with an overfunded life policy, minimum death benefit, maximum cash value. You can withdraw dollars Okay, but you can only take those dollars up to basis, meaning up to how much you put in. Anything after that will be taxed. Or you can take a loan from the insurance company throughout. So in this case, from 65 to 100, 
without paying any taxes. How is that possible? The cash value in savings is called collateral against any loans you take. The cash value continues to grow even when you borrow the money because you're borrowing it uh, from the life insurance policy. The money still resides in your policy. Okay. So why a loan does not lower the cash value, it's like a mortgage. House has no mortgage, $200,000. It increases by 10%. The value of the house is 220. Same thing here. You borrow $100,000 from your home plus interest, your house is still worth $200,000. It goes up by 10%. Isn't the house still worth $220,000? The house value, it doesn't matter how much you borrow from the house, the value of the house still goes up or down with the marketplace. Okay, so same thing here. The income you borrow is not repaid until after you pass on. You have your cash value savings, you subtract the retirement income, loan and interest, and the balance is a tax-free death benefit to the heirs. So we're, we're at a point here and we're gonna kind of put it all together. I hope you've enjoyed this content as much as I've enjoyed providing it for you. There's gonna be guarantees on both sides of the ledger, and again, we're not saying that 401k and qualified plans and IRAs are bad. They have their place. But we just want to make sure you understand that, that there is an alternative, a tax-free plan, taxable. So here, here are the guarantees. Guaranteed 100% at risk of loss when you're in a 401k, okay? You have risk unless you're in a money market or CD, but then you don't have um, the opportunity to gain, but you're at 100% risk of loss. In a tax-free plan, you're guaranteed 0% risk of market loss, even when the market goes down. Taxes on a 401k qualified plan, you're guaranteed to pay. You're guaranteed. We just don't know how much. The IRS will tell you how much, right? That's the uncertainty of this plan. We just don't know how much. Could be lower, could be higher. Chances are, when you have a country, and I love my country, that's $19, billion, $19 trillion in debt and over $80 trillion, including Medicare and Social Security. They have to do some creative math. And where the money is is in these 401ks. I'm just telling you. So you're guaranteed to pay taxes. Tax replan, you're guaranteed to be tax-free. Gains, guaranteed not to be locked in on the left side. 401k, qualified plans. Tax replan, guaranteed to lock in. Even if there's a horrendous year, you get a zero and the market comes back a little bit, you'll gain the next year. And to heirs, legacy to your family, guaranteed taxable. And on the tax-free plan, guaranteed tax-free. So here's my question to you. Do you like the left side or do you like the right side? Do you want to be on that 401k qualified plan train or do you want to be on that tax-free plan? Reach out to me. I'm happy to help you. I mean, many of you have subscribed to me for a long time. I've been planning to do a detailed analysis on this. We're doing fantastic reports for people. We are 100% independent. We work with over 50 insurance companies and annuity companies. And based on the situation, we're going to price it out and see what's best. Doesn't cost you anything to reach out. We'd love to do a review. If you already have life policies in place, we can see if they actually are structured properly and positioned properly, or if they're in position to lapse and not actually serve your family. So if you're looking for a review of a policy, or if you just want to have a conversation about this, if this is the right thing for you, just reach out to us. And that's it for today, my friends. Bill Constein, Freedom Wealth TV. Have yourself fantastic day i hope you enjoyed it and again if you haven't done so already like positive comments subscribe and hit that notification bell and you'll be seeing another video real soon okay my friends have a great one